Make a wish, buddy. Guys, Deadpool's birthday wish just altered the very fabric of reality, and we think that he has only begun to scratch the surface of his godlike mutant ability to manipulate the multiverse. And it's this unlocked power that will be the key to Deadpool, Loki, and the Avengers defeating a classic Fantastic Four villain in Avengers Secret Wars. And a little later, we're going to discuss how Deadpool 1, Ms. Marvel, and the Shang-Chi post credit scene tie this entire theory together. Welcome back, Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. And in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer, we open with Wade's birthday party. Now, we see him making a wish before blowing out his candles, and shortly thereafter, there's a knock at the door. So it appears as if this wish was the catalyst for the TVA showing up. So the question is, what did Deadpool wish for? And what about that wish triggered the interest of the TVA? Well, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is why does the TVA even arrest people to begin with? In season one of Loki, we learned about this thing called the Sacred Timeline. The TVA was tasked by the Kang variant, He Who Remains, to monitor the flow of time. Anyone who stepped off their predetermined path would be arrested by the TVA and ultimately pruned from existence and then sent to the void at the end of time, a place that we will be seen in Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh my These sacred timeline offenders are called variants. People like you veer off the path the timekeepers created. We call those variants. If an individual made a choice that wasn't part of their predetermined path, a new timeline would form and splinter off from the sacred timeline. The TVA would then roll in, arrest the variant, and prune that timeline. But after the events of Loki Season 2, the TVA no longer polices these branching timelines. After the defeat of He Who Remains and Loki's ascent to the throne, Loki did away with the sacred timeline and formed a multiverse that grows like a tree, allowing for new branches to grow, the multiverse to flourish, and for everyone to have free will. Under Loki, the TVA took on a new responsibility, keeping the multiversal tree healthy. They no longer clip branches, they simply monitor multiversal threats that will threaten the free will that Loki has granted everyone. Threats like variants of He Who Remains, such as Quantum Manius Kang. I guess one of them caused a little bit of a ruckus on 616 adjacent realm, but they handled it, so we're all good for now. And this is also what makes Deadpool potentially so much fun. The multiverse saga is at its best when we get to see variants of heroes from different timelines and unexpected scenarios. Like, who wouldn't want to see Captain Kirk fight the Borg? Oh yeah, that would be cool. Right? And that's why I've been getting into Star Trek Fleet Command, by far the best Star Trek game I've ever played and the sponsor of this video. Oh, okay, what's it like? Oh, dude, Star Trek Fleet Command is so awesome. It's a free-to-play, open-world MMO in the Kelvin timeline, where the galaxy galaxy is about to go to war. It's got classic Trek stuff with Klingons, Romulans, and the Federation all vying to control the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. You build fleets and bases and recruit Trek characters to man your fleets. Plus, it's available for cross-play on mobile and desktop with a Scopely account. So whether you're a hardcore Trekker, a casual fan, or you're looking to get into Star Trek, this game is perfect. And with the new Wave Defense feature, you can play with other players, collaborating to defend from a central point against waves of increasingly powerful enemies. It's also very cool how they incorporate the characters. You can unlock heroes, villains, and rare side characters, and each of them bring different attributes to your ship. So for new players, use our promo code WARPSPEED to get a content pack for free with 10 shards of Kirk. Here's how you redeem the code. Download the app using our link or this QR code, sign up for a Scopely account, then go to the Star Trek Fleet Command website store, click promo codes, type in warp speed, and you're done. So download Star Trek Fleet Command with our link in the description or use this QR code. You will not regret it. Now back to what I was saying. So back to the TVA they do more than monitor the threats of variants. He Who Remains was right about the fact that unlimited free will throughout the multiverse would result in the multiverse expanding so chaotically that it began to die. I saw the multiverse, and it was dying. The branches are dying. Loki took his place at the end of time and replaced Kang's throughput multiplier to keep this from happening. Loki's sacrifice of holding reality together keeps the TVA safe from annihilation. Essentially, Loki is the trunk of the tree. He's holding the multiverse together by supporting all of its branches and giving them life. But without the help of the TVA, the multiverse would be doomed to fail. So now, maintaining free will is important to the TVA, and the only time they will intervene is if the free will of others is being threatened. Oh, and if an incursion occurs. Now, do you say right now? Well, like I said, the job of the TVA is to protect the tree, and in an ever-expanding multiverse, branches can still collide, aka an incursion. An incursion occurs when the boundary between two universes erodes and they collide, destroying one or both 
entirely. It's the TVA's responsibility to save these branches from destruction, and this is similar to what their role was in the comics. So what's this gotta do with Deadpool? Well buddy, Deadpool made a wish that caused an incursion. Deadpool wished to be in the MCU. I smell what you're stepping in, Sensei. And also, speaking of Deadpool being in the MCU, be sure to check out our Bert and Ernie as Deadpool and Wolverine. Can you tell me how to get to the MCU shirt over at our merch store, ScreenCrushMerch.com. We've also got this great Deadpool MCU Savior shirt inspired by this line from the trailer. I am Marvel Jesus. Guys, shopping our merch store is one of the best ways you can directly support our channel and help us keep making videos like this one. You can find the link down in the comments below. So, in the comments and even in the Deadpool movies, we know that Deadpool is a big Marvel fan. Thor 411, X-Men Unlimited 12, you know, it is always been a dream of mine to see my face reflected in your helmet as you charge at me with murderous intent. In the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer, Wade seems to be at a low point. Wade says it's been a rough few years and that he's happy and the luckiest man alive, but I'm not buying it. I still see sadness behind that smile. But I'm happy. Now we've theorized that he and Vanessa are no longer together, and it even looks like he may have hung up the red suit and is no longer superheroing. And if they want to go all super meta with it, they could even say that he's been sad because it's been so long since he did a movie. It's been six years after all. Maybe since Disney bought Fox, he hasn't had any bad guys to fight over in his universe, and it's been very boring. I'm no person, that's pretty meta, but go on. My point is that Wade is longing for some meaning in his life. I don't think he specifically wished to be in the MCU, but instead he wished to feel heard and even to to be seen, perhaps even seen by us, the viewer. Maybe he's sad that his ability to break the fourth wall and talk to us has been gone for so long, and the place for that to happen again will be in the MCU. Any tips on uh, getting into the MCU there, Korg? So when he makes his wish, he, his friends, and even his apartment are teleported into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Sort of like how Eddie and Venom were brought into the MCU and let there be carnage, but like not nearly as obvious. <laughs> Just mere moments after Deadpool and his friends arrive in the new universe, the TVA knocks on the door. Why? Because, as we learned in the Multiverse of Madness and Spider-Man No Way Home, the presence of someone from another universe confuses and destabilizes reality, thus causing incursions. Steven, your arrival here confuses and destabilizes reality. As we discussed a moment ago, the TVA is pretty live and let live now. But one thing they will not allow are incursions. They'll arrest Wade and take him back to the TVA and then prune his friends. When Deadpool arrives at the TVA, they explain that his wish was undone and he has shown a screen where his birthday party continues on as normal as if the wish never happened. Our Wade is now a variant. A cosmic mistake. Now the TVA is very impressed by Wade's ability to alter the very fabric of space-time by just wishing something into existence. This ability could prove to be quite dangerous for the safety of the multiverse and they want to monitor him closely. So instead of pruning him, they recruit him and seek to learn about his ability, an ability that is linked to his power to break the fourth wall. We've got a great video up on the channel right now talking about how Deadpool and She-Hulk's fourth wall breaking will connect a secret war, so be sure to check that out. Anyways, the TVA wants to study Deadpool and use his power to help manage the multiverse. Deadpool has the potential to control reality like a god, similar to what we saw She-Hulk do with Kevin in the She-Hulk finale. Well, can we not do Todd gets Hulk powers? Erasing blood clot and similar to what He Who Remains did with his crafting of the Sacred Timeline. So, the TVA offers to grant Deadpool's wish and place him in the MCU in exchange for his help. But I thought you said it would cause an incursion if he went to the MCU. Well, normally it would, but maybe they're lying and telling him that they can fix it to where that won't happen. Or, you know, we do see multiple variants from the TVA skip to different timelines and not cause incursions. So there could be some TVA technology that will allow him to not cause an incursion if he goes to the MCU. But little does Deadpool know that in order for him to be brought into the MCU without it causing an incursion, the universe he comes from would have to be destroyed, just like all the other variants that we meet in the show Loki. And his universe is the Fox X-Men universe, the same universe we see remnants of in the void in the trailer. Wow, person, this TVA sure does sound pretty bad guyish. I thought they were good guys now. Well, buddy, like any organization, there's going to be some bad apples. I mean, after all, we did already see a TVA rebellion in season two of Loki. So it wouldn't surprise me if it turned out that there are some TVA agents who are still loyal to their former master, He Who Remains. Oh, I gotcha, that's good. And we think these rogue agents could be planning a coup against Loki, and these rogue agents are planning to use Deadpool and his reality-bending powers to do it. Beg your pardon. Deadpool soon realizes that he's being used, and he makes a reference back to X-Men Origins Wolverine about how he's been used as a third-act villain before, and he's not doing it again. He then tries to escape the TVA and return to his home universe, only to find out that it's gone. Deadpool ends up pruning himself to get to the void just to be with all his friends. You don't just stand there, you ape. Okay, so we have established that rogue members of the TVA want to exploit Deadpool's ability to manipulate reality and overthrow Loki. But are we supposed to believe that their master
master plan is to turn over control of the multiverse to Deadpool? No. Oh, come on. There's a villain lurking in the quantum realm that these TVA agents are working for. The same villain that we think was teased in the post credit scene of Shang-Chi. What is it? A beacon. We're sending a message. A message to where? Following the defeat of Kang the Conqueror in Quantumania, a power vacuum was left open in the Quantum Realm, and a new being took control of the realm, and that villain's name is Annihilus. In the comics, Annihilus is a giant celestial-like being from the Negative Zone who has a thing for conquering. Okay, what's the Negative Zone? Well, the Negative Zone is most synonymous with the Fantastic Four, as is the character of Annihilus. It's basically an alternate dimension really similar to the MCU's Quantum Realm, a place where time and space behave very differently. In fact, I think it's very likely that the Negative Zone in the MCU will be revealed as a place within the quantum realm, perhaps the deepest layers of the realm, or that they are just one and the same. I also think that we can learn that the MCU's new Fantastic Four team has been trapped in the negative zone, or the quantum realm, all this time, but that's a discussion for another video. Anyways, while we all acknowledge that He Who Remains was a bit of a tyrant, we can all admit that there were some pretty big threats that he was protecting the multiverse from, and I think one of these threats was Annihilus, and with He Who Remains and Kang gone, Annihilus would now be free. In the comics, Annihilus has this cosmic rod that emits orange energy and is capable of altering the fabric of reality. Sound familiar? Oh yeah, that's the TVA pruning rod thing is. Exactly, the pruning rods that we see in the trailer for Deadpool and Wolverine. That's supposed to be scary? Pegging isn't new for me, friendo. But it is for Disney. Now they were supposedly created by He Who Remains or OB, but they could have been based on the cosmic rod of Annihilus. In the comics, Annihilus was also in possession of the Nega Bands, another set of cosmic artifacts we've seen make their way into the MCU as Ms. Marvel's bangles. You're gonna need this. Now, these bands have shown to be very important to the MCU's multiverse saga. In the comics, there are the quantum bands and the nega bands. The nega bands derive their power from the negative zone, so perhaps in the MCU, the quantum bands derive their power from the quantum realm. You guys just put the word quantum in front of everything? So we have had a lot of theories about these bands and the Ten Rings and their connection to Kang and Secret Wars. And even though Kang is now out of the picture, the quantum bands will still play a major role in the multiverse saga. A little earlier, we talked about how Deadpool was on the verge of unleashing unlocking a new mutant ability, the ability to manipulate reality. In the first Deadpool movie, we saw Wade get put through various forms of torture to unlock his mutant gene and give him powers. If you're lucky, your mutant genes will activate and manifest in a spectacular fashion. And after he got those powers, he was able to break the fourth wall, implying that his fourth wall breaking ability is connected to his mutant gene. So what we think is that Deadpool's power isn't that he can never die. His power is that he can transcend reality and has that ability to break the fourth wall. In other words, the reason Deadpool can't die is essentially because his mutant ability has turned him into a character in a story. And characters, especially comic book characters, can never die. In Ms. Marvel, we learned that she too had an unlocked mutant gene that was activated when she came in contact with the bank. Angle. Kamala, there's something different in your genes, like a mutation. As we've discussed earlier, Wade is not happy. What if his breakup with Vanessa has hurt his heart so bad it's like a form of torture? And that torture, just like in Deadpool 1, has unlocked even more of his mutant abilities and also bringing the trilogy full circle. So his ability to break the fourth wall has been enhanced to the point that a simple birthday wish can alter reality. The only problem is he can't control this new ability. So what if the rogue TVA agents and Annihilus' plan is to bring Deadpool into contact with the quantum bands and fully unlock his mutant abilities, just like the bangle unlocked Kamala Khan's mutant Annihilus could then hold Deadpool captive and torture him, just like in Deadpool 1, and use Deadpool's mutant ability to alter the fabric of reality, defeat Loki, and take over the multiverse. Not great, Bob! It's also worth mentioning that Annihilus, like Deadpool, was once owned by Fox. So if there is a meta story to be told here, Annihilus would fit into that perfectly. We should also mention how we've theorized before that the Celestials were the ones who created the Quantum Bands. And I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if the MCU's Annihilus is actually classified as a Celestial. And perhaps he was banished to the Negative Zone or the Quantum Realm by his colleagues, just like Kang when he proved to be a threat to the multiverse. Wow, person, that's a lot. You think that's a lot? Well, I can do you one better. This blue hand wearing the bangle in Ms. Marvel, what if it's not a blue-skinned Kree? What if it's the dead body of God Loki? What if we see Loki come into possession of these bands with the help of Deadpool and that's how he is able to defeat Annihilus? But at some point, Loki does die and his body returns to its original blue color like we saw in Thor The Dark World. Loki has ascended to being a fifth dimensional being. He sees all of time at once, which means he's always being born, he's always fighting, he who remains, and he's always dying. Also, the multiverse can have free will. And the bangle being found on his body could all be part of his plan to keep 
keep his multiversal tree growing. Loki will have created an Ouroboros of his own. Not an Ouroboros that deprives people of free will, but an Ouroboros that protects free will. An Ouroboros that mimics nature and the circle of life. And it also makes sure that cosmic threats like Kang and Annihilus will never be able to harm the multiverse. And we think that Deadpool is going to be the key to it all. Deadpool may even be the key to rebooting the Marvel multiverse in Avengers Secret Wars, all with a simple wish. Well guys, big shout out to Colton Ogburn who wrote this video. You can find his Twitter link below. So let us know, do you think that Deadpool will be the key to helping Loki and the Avengers save the multiverse? Will Annihilus be the big threat to replace Kang? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.